Hey, and welcome to The QB Show, starring Woody Adams, Don Brolin, and myself, Stacy Kildall. We'd like you to take a minute to visit our sponsors. Our show is brought to you by the following. Avalara.com, an amazing sales tax engine to help you make sales tax less taxing. Exact Online, an online inventory solution specializing in manufacturing and distribution. T-Sheets.com, an amazing time tracking solution. Skyline from UnidataIT.com, QuickBooks and software hosting. And Zencash.com, to help manage your accounts receivables. We hope you enjoy the show. Live. Welcome. Wednesday night, September 2nd, 2014. How's everybody doing? This is the QB Show, formerly Radio Free QuickBooks. Glad to have you aboard. If you're watching for the next hour, we're going to be around until uh, 8.30 Eastern. Or maybe you'll just kind of watch or listen throughout the week. But we do thank you for listening slash watching the show. Good show tonight. It's just Stacy Dodd and I. First, myself, uh, my name is Woody Adams. I'm a product specialist with Intuit. And, uh, you know, anything I do or say on the show might not necessarily reflect what Intuit does or says. But usually, <laughs> is that good enough? Not what they do or say. Just is not good, good enough. Right. I love it. We're, we're <laughs> safe. We're safe. I'm trying to streamline and abbreviate. You know, we got QuickBooks 2015, or at least the account edition, coming out a week from today. So I just got to, I realized that I have some stuff I still have to do for that that I forgot. Um, so I'm, you know, kind of fried from that. And, and that's me. And, and we'll talk more about that later. But Don, thank you for, first off, thanks last week for uh, carrying the show. And, and you and Hector, I heard, just did an awesome job. Well, Hector really did the job. I was just there for the ride. Um, it was good. It was a good time because we love the desktop. And so we did a lot of that, kind of talked about a few little tips and tricks. It was good. It was very good. He's, he's very, very knowledgeable. And he loves avocados, which makes me love him more than I did before. And avocados are great. Avocado recipe. We talked about that. And really, you know, sometimes when I look inside of this, my eyebrows look like they're cut off a little bit from here. Maybe I'll start filling them in for the show. No, they're they're normal. Okay. You probably just. I think they look it fine. Must be your viewer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. must be your Maybe viewer. Anyway, uh, back to the show. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. We had a good time. We talked a lot about uh, posting and and some little tips about the view in QuickBooks that I didn't even really notice before, but now I'm happy that I did. Wow. And uh, we had it was good. It was good. How are you guys? You guys had you guys were in the action, as I call it. But wait, I was the only uninvited party, which I get it. You don't invite yeah. desktop people to stuff. We were at Midwest Accounting Show. Totally and, cool. Uh, that was fun. And yeah. uh, you know, but we just I just yeah. wanted to thank you. Thanks for that. Stacy, how are you doing? Yeah. I, you know what I'm doing really well. Today was Eric's first day of kindergarten and I had to go <clears> with him. Uh, it was a half day, but I want to say the Midwest Accounting Show is always pretty busy. Um, it's uh, interesting when you're presenting because you don't actually, when we present for Intuit Academy, we don't actually present in like a room. We actually right. present on the show floor in kind of a little giant cubicle. Basically, they yeah. create like this. It's the only way I can describe it. They're like cubicle walls, and so. Um, <laughs> It gets a little loud, so it sometimes can be a little bit distracting when you're in there. But I'm doing really well. Kira started seventh grade today, and she's just seventh grade is it fits like a glove for her. She has she dresses like a little gypsy all the time, and so she she's never put on a pair of matching socks in the entire twelve years she's been on this planet, and um, she just had, you know, black and white striped little sweater um, with very, very floral print pants, 
uh, two different color socks, and she just was she's just my little gypsy, and she's adorable. Um, and Eric started That's kindergarten, awesome. and hey, congratulations. I, yeah, I'm. He's just really, really so excited about kindergarten. Um, but uh, I want to show everybody. I made this, and I'll put up a link <clears throat> on social. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do a quick screen share, and it was up when we started. Um, I created. I created a little countdown website, um, and, and the website. Oh actually, yeah, QB Connect. It's uh, a countdown seconds. to QuickBooks Connect, and uh, mm. it's pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I, I posted it on Twitter today, and it's actually when I open up Google Chrome, I have three tabs that open up, and uh, I changed mm -hmm. my first mm -hmm. tab to this website, uh, and then my other one is Gmail, and then I have uh, just a regular Google. Uh, page that opens up. So those are my three tabs that open. And I, 48 days. That's good to know. 48 days. And I'm so excited. And that's the other thing I want to talk about. I just want to mention really super quick before we get into sponsor stuff, and we'll do that super fast, is um, tonight after the show, and basically up until the event, um, every Tuesday, uh, I kind of co-manage, co-host, uh, a Q&A about the QuickBooks Connect event. Um, you can get more details at quickbooksconnect.com, uh, but if you go to LinkedIn and you search for QB Connect, that group, you can join. It's an open group. It's not specifically for that event. Um, it's really kind of um, a group that we started and we sort of named after the event, and it's sort of the unofficial official group for the event, but really, we're going to continue the group after the event because it's a way for small business owners and the accountants and the third-party developers that Intuit's trying to bring together. We really want to bring them together on the group. So we do that Q&A. Um, and then next week, uh, our buddy Chris Repetto, um, and you guys probably should watch the show because he has a fabulous uh, color that his office is painted, and apparently everybody loves it. <laughs> Don commented on it <coughs> on the show. Uh, so he's going to be our guest mm. because he has big, huge, giant news uh, to announce next week. Oh, um, I can't wait. That's I know. Exciting. I'm ridiculously excited. I'm going to put it out there that I hope that the news is that Weird Al Yankovic is the, um, is the, uh, the act. Yeah. They haven't announced the band. And I oh, really that. want Weird Al. because would be funny, though. He's so funny. He's got a great new album. And... It's yeah. one of those bands where it's not going to offend. Everybody's going to have fun <laughs> with it. Nobody's going to you know, be offended. I just think it'll be a really fun group. But it's probably not that. I don't know what the announcement is. Um, so I wanted to mention that. Uh, and so make sure you watch the show. And then if one of you guys want to do uh, sponsors, we have Avalara Two Sheets and Unidata if you guys want to do them. Go on. Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched. And um, I, I, you know, sorry for the hair. I, I don't know um, what happened this morning, and no, I did. Oh, it's get, fine. Did, it looks good. Well, I did get a haircut um, before the Midwest Accounting Show, but obviously I spent. You know, I shouldn't have given them the money for the haircut. Well, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> probably, probably should have had a free, a free haircut. So I'm just going to go back to having Nicola do it because she does a great job, but she doesn't like doing it. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't like doing it, but she, you know, she's really good at it. So anyway, but I'll, I'll do the sponsors regardless with the hair as we go. Um, and, you know, next next Tuesday, hopefully after Chris uh, is on or before or whatever, maybe we can just kind of talk a little about 2015 desktop, or, or maybe we have Jason on uh, some week after that, right? Oh, Something yeah, like that's that. a good idea. We get Jason on, and he can come and just talk about his favorite things about what's new in the new version. I mean, it's kind of crept up on us all, right? All of a sudden, it's there. So uh, we start that season soon, so pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Um, all right, so we'd like to thank, uh, of course, our sponsors, Avalara, uh, Sales Tax, <coughs> Sophistication, complexity management, they're ahead of all the Nexus stuff and Nexus, et cetera, everything coming over. Sales tax, use tax, GPS tracking. If your client is getting penalized, please just hook up Avalara to your QuickBooks desktop or QBO product. And it'll save them a bunch of money. Uh, and then of course T Sheets, T Sheets.com, online time tracking, clock in and out everywhere, even some reporting as well, approving of the timesheets. 
send them over to QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop to do payroll, et cetera. And, and, the, and at least for on the desktop and the payroll, the jobs are assigned and even classes and notes. That's nice. And then, of course, uh, from the very beginning, Unidata as well as Skyline, unidataIT.com. I think Skyline is kind of their new, uh, not really new, right, Stacy? Skyline, can you, didn't you break that down before? It's like a streaming so QuickBooks or something? Yeah, so I think that's their new brand. I think they've rebranded okay. themselves as Skyline, and so that's kind of what they're um, Interesting. sort of calling Skyline. it. But okay. they have a few different ways that you can host QuickBooks. One, they have the traditional uh -huh. remote desktop protocol, or RDP. Um, they have also um, dedicated servers that you can use. They have Citrix. I just log in. I have a website that I go to, and I have a Citrix login. Um, both Shannon and I have that for our clients. And then they also have um, what's called this um, cloud paging. And so basically you stream the software just as long as you're using it. So it's you just install this little client. It's a very small application. And you basically just stream the software uh, while you're using it. It's actually it's really, really cool. Um, I was yeah. really impressed with it. So Well, you can find out more about hosting QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, unidataIT.com, but yeah, they're called Skyline now. I think that's pretty exciting. So Avalara T-Sheets and Skyline, thank you so much for sponsoring uh, the show. Now, <clears throat> anything critical that you guys wanted to cover that you ran into this week that you thought would be beneficial for people to know before we go into questions or things? Oh, uh, no, you know, the one thing I would say is I uh, had a couple people at the uh, Chicago show have the situation, and we've talked about it a couple times. I actually had a couple projects like this. Um, just how to, if somebody has combined multiple companies in QuickBooks Online and they need to separate them out, um, you have to basically convert it to desktop and use some sort of file transfer utility. Maybe Carl Irvin's data file, you know, data transfer utility. I don't know what the name of it is, or like a, you know, like a transaction. Pro wait, wait. Do you mean? Do you mean they have two files and they want to combine them into one? No, like they have like maybe two or three EINs um, in one QBO file. So basically two companies in that all the data is in one QuickBooks Online file and they want to separate them out. Are they tracking so, those? E oh, so you're, but there's only one EIN field. So what you mean they're easy, either using class tracking to track the other well, EIN or doing different that. Like files? it's all interspersed and somebody jacks <laughs> oh. it up. Right. No, no freaking nightmare. That's not appropriate. What? That is not. Word for it's not appropriate. What did I say? No, no, I'm no saying wasn't, I'm just saying that's that kind of a situation. Well, but it's not appropriate. I thought maybe I swore, and I no, you are very well contained. <laughs> you basically did <laughs> when you said that scenario. You were basically. It was just pure profanity. I, I, I almost <laughs> lost my mind, and I'm not even an accountant. <laughs> Daisy was talking code profanity. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to say I just did some presentation somewhere, and I got off stage, and somebody, like, clapped me, like, slapped me on the back and said, good oh, job, God. you didn't swear at all. And I <laughs> was like, I really don't swear. Swear in the, my live events at it's a all. Terrible thing you said. So yeah, I just I thought that was pretty funny. So that's the thing. So if you have those two and somebody has jacked it all up and combined everything, or maybe it was originally one company and then it split, and so you want to get those transactions separated, you actually have to convert it to desktop and then use some sort of tool to extract the data yeah. um, and this, then this create. So two new QuickBooks desktop files and then import the data or you can That's use awesome. you can pull, export the data out into an Excel file and use Transaction Pro importer to import it into QuickBooks Online. So that's the only thing, because I had a couple people that were asking me about that in my sessions last week. Yeah, I think, I, I just remember a couple of Scaling New Heights ago, Mary Longacre, um, who does a lot with conversions going back and forth and you know, her, her Swiss cheese comment, I mean, just going from QBO to desktop, I, I'm sure it's fine most times, but there's you're still going to have a lot of cleanup, I think, on the other side. Before you even, you know, extract the data using whatever tool, I know Carl's tool goes, takes, you know, you can export transactions from one QBO 
QuickBooks file, right. excuse me, into another. He probably is, does have the other way. I, I don't know, or Base State is, does or something. Yeah, which is why I actually, if I have to do a conversion <laughs> like this, I actually prefer, well, I prefer the Base State anyway, I mean, just to yep. be honest. Um, I, I like Carl Urban's if you have to go from one desktop to mm -hmm. another desktop, but um, mm -hmm. for this situation, it really is actually, really is actually, I think, easier to use Transaction Pro Exporter and just export it to a CSV or some sort of spreadsheet yes. format. Yes, and then just bring it into another QBO file. The transactions that you want, and then yeah. you can use the Transaction Pro importer uh, for QuickBooks Online to actually just um, import them into a new data file. And what's really cool is you can then take the transactions that you don't want in the original file, and you can use the Transaction Pro Deleter that's on apps.com and delete those transactions if you need to. So I awesome. prefer to do uh, conversions or any projects like that, um, any really heavy lifting projects, I really prefer to use Transaction Pro Importer. No, that's great. <clears throat> that's great. And also, uh, really cool news, I found um, a receipt printer that hooks up to the iPad. Remember we were talking a couple weeks ago? Yeah. And Yes. About QBO Plus with, with Vend HQ, and I was like, but what about the receipt printer? And there's yeah. got to be them, I and there are several. What is it? Uh, um, it is the... Uh, I must know. Hold on here. I oh. Mean, you're making you it know, up. I'm, no, no, oh I'm going to have to... Uh, not careful. I'm going to have... Hold on. I think I got it. Let me see here. Okay. Yes, it is the... Um, it's made by Blue Star, so you can go to Blue Star... Inc.com, B-L-U-E like blue, star like star, I-N-C.com. It's the TSP, like the, the the office space reports. So the model number is TSP, or is that TPS reports? Anyway, TSP, <laughs> TSP143L, like Larry, TSP143L. It's a receipt printer. It You just connect it, you network it into the Wi-Fi infrastructure there, and you can just plug it into the the one output option, right, that you got in your iPad, and you got a receipt printer that hooks up to Vend HQ, and then Vend HQ then will dump into QuickBooks Online. Uh, and that's for if you want, like, remote point of sale and you're not, you don't need all the QuickBooks point of sale features or complexity. If you're traveling a lot, anything from employees in a wine tasting room to go into a trade show or a conference or whatever, and then you could use either GoPayment or Square to, to, to swipe. So I think, I thought that was really cool. I'm it hoping really that, cool. that that winery, small winery, they really didn't, I think POS was overwhelming for them, so I'm really hoping that they go with a simpler setup, at least for now. You know, I mean, hosting point of sale is definitely an option, but I think that was just too much, too many moving parts for them. So that was exciting, and, and, and Blue Star is a great, you know, they make um, hardware for, you know, smartphones, iPads, things like that, that work with point of sale retail type software. Very exciting. Oh, I have a road. question. Well, yeah. I have a desktop question. We have, yes. we have questions. We have, okay. I know, I know, but this is actually like a, a legit question. So if oh, somebody... Oh, rest of them are not. That's no, <laughs> no, I mean, instead of one of my BS questions is what oh, I'm okay. saying. Instead all right, of me I just it. like, hey, what'd you do all weekend? No, this is like a legit question because I can't remember. So if somebody has QuickBooks uh, like Premier 2013... You can still have 2014 and open up an accountant's copy and send it back without upgrading the file, right? Yeah, the changes will go back. You just won't have access to any of the 2014 accountant enhancements we might have done. Okay. Okay. On top of the other restrictions, you know, with just okay. the accountant's copy. But yeah, it's it can been go a back. really long time. I think it's probably been two years since I've used an accountant's yeah. copy. Oh. oh. Right. Well, it's it's about the same as it was two years ago. I mean, nothing's okay. changed. Yep, exactly the same. Yep. I know, Don. We're just no. not investing there. Don't hurt me. No. All don't, right. Don't no. hurt me. No. Okay, so, All right, so we let's have do some desktop for just for fun. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go through Jody's questions. All right, let's do that. Those are the cool Don Berlin questions. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. We're going to do, you know what? I'm going to pretend you guys aren't even here. That's mm -hmm. awesome. For like Just like five minutes. Go for it. Okay. I'm just going to sit back. Yeah, sit back and be, you can't talk about anything else. No, you were okay. about to say sit back and just be quiet. Just finish yeah, just be that. quiet about your stuff. Sit, sit down and shut up, Kildall. That's yeah. what you want to say. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> fair. 
So we're, to, we're going to talk a little bit. We have some great questions from a webinar that I did last week. Um, and really nice, nice. Jody sent an email and I said, you know what, Jody? We're going to cover this on Radio Free QuickBooks, on the QB show, on the whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and so I was kind of excited about it because one of the things we, we've talked about barter in and out. And her question, Jody's question is actually really, really good. So she has some uh, questions about other fields listed on the page. If she's not maybe class tracking, maybe she has it turned on. Maybe she doesn't need class tracking. Um, certainly if she's not tracking the customer job part of it with the expenditures or the or the um, the bills that she's paying for the barter for that particular job, she may not be needing those fields. And so that's cool. Totally good. Are you taking my picture, Woody, with your with your cell phone? Um, so I'm, I'm just mute. I'm muted. I'm, I'm muted. Just, Sorry. Good. That's okay. Well, I'm going to still pick on you a little bit because it's I missed you. No, please. Um, so this yeah, person is like she, uh, Jody. This person, Jody. She is a person. Uh, she's using QuickBooks 2014. She's wondering about reconciling the barter account, and that's a really, really great question. For me, reconciling the barter account is important because you need to know, especially if you're using multiple vendors, multiple customers. We've talked about how you bill someone in a barter for things that they're doing that you're doing for them, and then you pay people for things that, that they're doing for you, but you're not really exchanging money. And that's the whole point of the barter uh, concept. It's very easy when you're talking about one particular uh, transaction or one particular project. So if you're someone who's not regularly bartering, you may not need to reconcile the account. But if you do have situations where you have multiple vendors or multiple customers that you're bartering with, you want to make sure that you are, in fact, reconciling that account and that when you go into the barter bank account, if you will, able to total by that project and able to make sure that, hey, listen, I'm this guy here, I've done this much work for him and he's done this much for me and so the balance right now is that I owe him $500 and this other guy so my barter bank account is, you know, X number of dollars. And so I may be in another project. I need to be tracking, especially if I'm in multiple barter situations. And so the, it was a great question because do you actually reconcile it? And as always, we like to say it depends. And it only depends because if you are in the practice of using barter on a frequent basis, you have to really think about what you're doing. You're still accounting for the money coming in. You're still accounting for the money going out because very easily, from an IRS perspective, which I only encourage those of you who have a business to actually track it. I know, I'm getting crazy. Track the information, keep the information, know the ins, know the outs, so that if something does happen, like an audit, for instance, that you actually have the answers. Um, and so, you know, a little sidebar, Woody, you know how I do that. I can't help it because I'm always looking out. I'm, I'm trying to help people help themselves. And so with the barter, um, you just want to be very careful and you want to make sure that you are, in fact, reporting the income. You're, you know, reporting the expenses that you're paying out for those people. But remember, there are occasions as accountants that we find clients who do work for a client, do business work. So they own a business, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff for them, and then they come in and they paint or they redo your bathroom, right? Um, so they redo your bathroom. That's not something that is technically an expense to you, of course, for your business. And so you have to be very, very careful about tracking that information. So as far as a reconciliation goes, I would just say make sure that you are tracking the information and that you're certainly posting it properly, whether it's a, a true business barter or if it might be a combination of business and, and, and personal. And it could go either way. So that would be my big warning or advice on that kind of, of a transaction. So um, yes, the answer is yes, you should reconcile. You should make sure you have the ins and outs going on. Right, Woody? Uh, absolutely. No, that's a good one. Uh, and I'm glad you answered that one. Now, there was another one they had about, I'm confused, um, how you actually track earnest money, like that you paid and then also got returned to you for, sure. say, a, a house? 
Yep, so that's comment. a good question. Yep, that was another good question. It was um, if they were looking for a property, so Jody was looking for a property to um, be able to move her business into, and so she would say, you know, okay, I wanna, I wanna rent this space or buy this space. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just say she was renting it for hypothetical reasons, and she needed to put down, let's say, the security deposit or a, or a hold payment until I decide, you know what, maybe that space isn't best for me. Maybe it is, and so let's just say a thousand dollars she put down out of the checkbook, and so she would put that in a security deposit account on her balance sheet. Are you yawning? Because I will come through my te my stinking computer. Woody just yawned. It's okay. Oh, I did not. That was not me. Woody, I love you, and I couldn't help it. I, you know what? I have no feeling. No, I'm, I've been yawning like for the last two hours. It has nothing to do with you. I'm just, I, it's just <laughs> really tired. Nothing to do with you. I'm sorry. I just it's really not, tired. And today. I don't have a filter. So I, I had to. Oh, no, sorry. I tried to we cover it. About this audit, Woody. Like animals. I mean, like, like. Yeah, I don't know how you guys do it. You must be exhausted. Woody, you know what? We do our best. All we can do is our best. And there, there are occasions before noon that some of us are yawning, and I just, I can't have that. I can't have it. You know why? Because that stuff's contagious. It's contagious. It's like. I don't know, some kind of disease, them yawns. Anyway, that's a rabbit hole. For Jody, though, good question on the earnest payments. Make it a payment, putting it on the balance sheet, and when that money gets returned to you, maybe decide not to take that property or buy that property. You would then put a deposit into your bank account, and you would offset that first earnest payment. So it sounds like she's had multiple earnest payments where she has the intention of either putting a down payment, again, I'm assuming according to the notes that she's had it returned to her 100%. Maybe it hasn't been returned 100%. Again, that's a whole nother, a whole nother conversation, but most definitely if she's putting earnest money down, she's getting it returned to her because she's maybe chosen a different property, that'll run through that same asset account, which was a really good question. And the, and the third question, which was a great uh, great well, question. Let me, let me break in there for a sec, Don. What kind of transactions are are you using for that? Is that journal entries? Are you using checks? Just the deposit form? So I would I would I would guess up front that if there was a check written for the earnest payment, let's say it was a thousand dollars, it's just a write check. Right. To the desktop. Okay. That's what people would use. Um, they would write a thousand dollars through the write check window, and then post that to an asset account. Which would be like security deposit, or you know, could be earnest deposit, or whatever you know, okay. whatever you want to call it, because really that's just a holding tank. Because that, at that point, here's the thing: in accounting, the balls are bouncing at all times, yeah. and they can be those things go all over the place. It's like being in a dodgeball game, right? And or you ever be on uh, be on the computer and have those little games where the balls bounce, or the cone moves, or the shell moves, and you have to follow it. They do that at yeah, basketball yeah. games too, right. up on the Screen, right? It's the same thing in accounting. You have to, every ball has to land somewhere, and it lands somewhere with an intention and a purpose, and you have to follow it. It's the same thing with earnest money. It's, it's with anything that you're doing, any transaction that you're doing in accounting, it goes somewhere. So if it goes from your checkbook into an earnest account, most, I would say, Woody, the answer to your question is most end users would use write checks. Yep, that's right? good. Would I use a journal entry? If I'm after the fact and I'm coming in and I'm restructuring or repurposing your books and making them accurate or whatever the case is, possibly I'm using a, a journal entry. I'm not a journal entry lunatic. Right, right. That's not. good. I want you know I want to use the functionality in QuickBooks for certain reasons for filtering or whatever the case is. But <clears throat> always the ball bounces in a way that you can always track it, and that's the thing that I always try to tell people: you can't. It has to go somewhere. And it has to right. be more accurately. But when you get it back, yep. that's when you're using the deposit form to that same asset account. Correct. Gotcha. And that zeroes that out. That sounds great. That's right. perfect. And, and, and the reason why it's another current asset is because it's really the quote unquote upfront customer deposit that would come into you, use a liability, but in the other direction. Correct. Nice. Exactly. And you know what's interesting about that too, Woody, <clears throat> is that. Um, I find when I'm sometimes working with the clients and we're trying to figure out, we're looking at maybe tax returns and we're looking at the QuickBooks file and we're saying, hey, listen, you know, what you have in the tax return and what happened in your checkbook are kind of two different things. You took money in from a loan, for instance. 
or you took money in from yourself or from another entity or whatever. Those are that's not revenue. Making a deposit into a bank account does not mean it's revenue. You know, we have commingling, we have other things that are happening, and that's just unfortunately that's in business. You can't avoid that in so many cases. But the purpose of the accounting part is to tell the story around what happened with those balls as they were bouncing. And so, anyway, I could do seven days of that, Woody. That's funny. When you were talking about the balls bouncing, I was thinking of uh, the last scene in Caddyshack where or, you know, <laughs> Gopher, Gopher's going from hole to hole and he, Bill Murray's trying to jump and you can't get it because in the go... Yeah. I love stuff. that. Great. I love it. <clears throat> but it's totally true. I'm just saying. You can't... You can't count deposits as revenue, and if you're doing that, you're you could be you could be causing some detrimental situations with your book. You just keep that in mind, or if you're an individual doing your own books, we have, don't mean revenue. We have two um, questions in the chat room. Okay, and I'm going to answer the first one, the easiest one first, and that is from Jeff. And Jeff um, was asking, hang on, let me scroll up there. He says, I need the ability, and we have a full chat room tonight, which is really kind of awesome. So, uh, and there's a few questions. So, uh, I want, I need the ability to automatically send recurring invoices and allow online payment by ACH checking, but not by credit card. So, what I'm thinking is maybe not invoices, but maybe automatic sales receipts, mm. um, because if you're using QuickBooks Online, you can use the QuickBooks payments and you can send the invoice and once you turn the payments on, they can actually open up the invoice in a web browser and then it'll say, they'll like, well, open up their email and it'll say view uh, invoice and then it'll say like pay now and they can use either a checking account or a credit card account to pay that. Now if you want it automatically, like maybe a recurring automatic charge for maybe membership dues or possibly monthly services for yourself, you can actually do the checking account via Bill.com. So Bill.com is an app in the App Store that helps you manage. Um, it's an apps.com or you can just go to Bill.com um, that it syncs with QuickBooks uh, Online and QuickBooks Desktop and it allows you to actually set up those recurring um, ACH uh, transactions rather than using a credit card. So uh, those are the two options. So if it's a sales receipt or it's something, an automatic charge that you need to bill their, their bank account, then you can use bill.com. If it's just a matter of you need to send out a recurring invoice and allow them to pay with a credit or a bank instead of a credit card, then you can just use the QuickBooks payments for that. So that's the first question. Um, and then Louise had one, and I'm going to let one of you guys answer it. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. It's way back. She was, I asked her if she could email it to me because um, it was pretty. I'm going to answer it while you're looking. I'm just going to answer a quickie. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. So if you have a deposit, this is another good question. If you have a bank deposit that you made and you're unable to account for some cash, let's say it's 20 bucks. Right, you can't like you don't know who it's from. You don't know why. Um, you have a couple of, of choices in the in the um, realm of paranoia. <clears throat> potentially, if you're someone who practices always putting money that is from clients into your bank account for your business, then you should count it as revenue, sales. Just count it as sales. If um, if you think that potentially you took that money out of your pocket and put it in the bank because maybe you had to cover some kind of um, you know maybe a check that you had written or whatever the case is or a debit purchase or something, you'll put that in as a member investment, owner investment, shareholder loan, depending on your entity level, um, and that's how you would post it. So if you're not sure where it's coming from and you cannot 100% justify that it was money that came out of your pocket, which by the way, you still have to prove, um, then, you know what, for 20 bucks, put it in sales. That's just, it's not a, you know, I'm not your tax person, disclaimer, all over the place, but um, you still should account for it in some capacity, and even put in the memo, I, I'm not really sure where this came from, but I'm going to count it in sales anyway, um, and we won't talk about sales tax, but, um, just the same. When in doubt, 
Um, I'm, I'm going to come up with some kind of really cool saying for that. But when in doubt, you should post it to sales, potentially, um, if you're not a commingler. If you're what not a commingler. Don't you don't want to be a commingler. So last yeah. week, though, Woody, we had yeah. we talked a little bit about naked QuickBooks, which we're not going to talk about tonight. But I just want you to know that that's kind of the level where we're at. Yeah. With, uh, with QuickBooks, and that was. Okay, so I found. The I needed to chime in. I lost it. Uh, I need to take a quick chime in break. Let me know when I can talk. Go. Oh, go ahead. We'll let you. So Kelly, <laughs> Kelly at T Sheets, right? Yeah. She's. Uh, I think she started working there a month or two ago. Awesome. Uh, to, to replace Jesse, on, on Twitter, bad haircuts happen to good people. <laughs> uh, said what? Say that again. Bad. bad haircuts happen to good people. Oh, she's adorable. That's awesome. That. Uh, so is appreciate awesome. that. I don't feel so bad. I but now that I know it's sure now haircut. it's confirmed though that I know it's bad, because <laughs> you know. Wow. You guys always know about haircuts, right? You guys always know about haircuts, or I might not have noticed, you know. But no, good stuff. Thank you, Kelly, for that. Um, was there another chat room question, Stacey? Sorry. Yeah, I, totally derailed I, it. I had it, and then I lost it. So um, hang on. I can scroll up. Because I can't okay. copy and paste, and as soon as somebody posts something, then it's the screen. So um, hang on. You know, I think I'm going to bring Abby on at the end of the show, if that's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, Are you going to interview her while she's under the couch? No, no, I'm going to bring her in here, you know, because Isaac, poor kid, I mean, it's great. He went and got the little ice, you know, binky that, yes. you know, with her teething. Do you and, guys uh, have the uh, the one, it's like a mesh, and you can put the fruit in it so they don't choke? Do you guys have that? No. Nope. You guys should get that. It's It kind of gets a little gross, but the kids, the babies love it. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, that sounds too messy. She's, a, she's quite a drooler. I think I'm going to cap it there. It's, it's Awesome though, so you can stick grapes in there, or you can put it like frozen grapes, or you can put in like bit, like chunks of apple, and so oh, yeah. it's she would dig like that. a little net thing, and they hang on to it, and there's mesh, and so they can chew on it, so they they don't choke when they're yeah. um, eating. It's really great. So yeah. I I can't find this question. It keeps I find it, and That's then right. um, it scrolls up. So I'm hoping that um, Louise emails it. So Louise, if you're listening, which I think you are. Um, Send it to uh, show at theqbshow.com, and we'll ask nice. that question, and we'll get it up on the air as mm. soon as we possibly can. Well, I wanted to go through and just stay with the desktop theme, just to be fair to QuickBooks Desktop. Oh, I got know. one for Dawn, too. Okay. I'm going to go through this quickly. It's kind of a... Uh, basically, there was an email chain going back and forth, or maybe I saw it on LinkedIn. I thought I saw it on LinkedIn last week um, when I was still on LinkedIn, of course, but... It's basically, you know, what is not in QuickBooks Pro. And I wanted to go through the list quickly, and then Don or Stacy, if you hear anything cool and you want a tangent on it, awesome. Then we'll ask the Don question. Then I wanted to uh, demo uh, deleting a vendor credit in QBO, and then we'll just keep rolling with questions. So okay. this is a, a list. It's just a quick list. We're not going to show anything here, but I think it's, since so many people are in the chat, and hopefully a lot of people will watch through this week, Basically, what is not in QuickBooks Pro? And I'm not really going to go through, you know, all the different premieres. We could just do a whole show on that. And, and we have a con we have thanks to uh, Charlie reminding me, Charlie Russell, of course. You know, we have a, a tool on the uh, QBShow.com website, uh, the Matrix. You know, I think has a premiere tab now. Yep. I think we just we just updated that. And, and don't worry, I'll be updating that document for all the new stuff in 2015 uh, by next week. So if you guys have that spreadsheet, you know, the Google spreadsheet, I'm going to be changing it in real time over the next couple weeks. So we should all be aligned and, and I'll uh, have what's, what's available, what's coming, and et cetera. So what's not in QB Pro? And this is a desktop conversation. So you would need Premiere or Enterprise and some things, certain, certain types of Premiere. Sales orders or back order tracking, not in QuickBooks Pro. Assembly items, not in QuickBooks Pro. Price levels, those are also not in QuickBooks Online uh, Plus. Previous reconciliation report, you know, you can go and look at, I think, just the last thing you reconciled, but you know those, that really cool trick in Premiere when you go to, the, to locate the discrepancy or look at the report, you can run a monthly report? That's actually kind of nifty. 
Uh, so that's Premiere and Enterprise. That is not in Pro. Some people just like Premiere just for that. Uh, of course, QBO has that widget grid, which is nice. Closing date exception report. That would be Premiere and above. The, the actual uh, journal and history button, not in Pro, did not know. You could still do, you know, you control Y. And there's a way to link to, to things, but the actual buttons themselves. The actual reverse journal entry tab, not in Pro. Interesting. Ah. Yeah, I mean, most people like that. So basically, if you go to into a pro, if you guys toggle from account to pro, and sometimes it's fun, you know, mix me on your coffee break or whatever, and you just feel like checking out pro because you haven't seen it in a while because you're so used to account edition, check out the journal entry window in pro. There's not much more rudimentary than that or fundamental. Not a whole lot there, except just debits and credits. <clears throat> Autofill for memos on journal entries, right. Create purchase orders from estimates. Oh, that's a cue in for contractors. Again, contractors should at least be on Premier Contractor. Um, Pro has some good reporting, but uh, you know, th there's some key. And I, Don, you would you'd probably agree for contractors, Pro is like the bare essentials. But really, you need to be on a, the Premier level product, preferably right. contractor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, exporting report templates. Interesting. Did not know that would not be in Pro. Uh, you know, when you just export the report template to another QuickBooks file, not in there. Debit and credit totals on journal entries. Correct. That's actually uh, in the account edition. Units of measure. Not in there. Either single or multiple. If you need the multiple, get the manufacturing wholesale edition. Uh, both that, contractor, and uh, well, I think those are the only two that have the multiple uh, units of measure. Oddly enough, Premier Retail doesn't even have unit of measure because it conflicts with our point of sale product. So, I, I mean, I don't know who buys Premier Retail. I, I, I don't even know. I, I, I'm a, I've been lobbying for years to just take that premier level out. You know? I mean, if you're using point of sale, you're probably using pro anyway, because point of sale is doing the most of the he heavy lifting. So why even bother with a, a retail skew for premier or enterprise? It just. Anyways, um, <clears throat> let's see here. Billing rate levels, also not in pro, and it's not in all the premieres either. Uh, bill of material. The full view, not in pro. That, that kind of goes along with your uh, build assemblies. Sales order fulfillment worksheet, not in pro. Track change orders on estimates. Also, again, reason why Don would put you on Premier Contractor instead of pro. Fixed asset manager, well, that's only an account addition in any enterprise, but not in pro. The file manager, QuickBooks file manager. Working trial balance. And the ability to track to track workers' comp and liability insurance, expiration dates, also not in pro. So those are kind of the key high-level ones. So, I mean, pro is pretty robust, and I would still argue that most businesses are using pro. Uh, I would still think that's true. I mean, maybe not in the pro advisor and certainly not advanced pro advisor space, maybe not the clients of Scaling New Heights folks or Sleater or, or whatever, those go into QB Connect. I think you guys probably look for Premier and Enterprise because you know what's in them. But I would still argue that most of the 5 million desktop users for QuickBooks Desktop in uh, the U.S. are, I'd, I'd like to say that, what, 3 million are on Pro? Is that, is that too uh, conservative? Maybe 4 million? I, think that's I don't funny. know. I mean, Pro's very popular. I'm just very saying, but there's a lot of things. You can get it for a lot a of buck. things in there. You can get it for yeah. 100 bucks. I know. For three years or you more if you don't have any I'm connected say services. This. I'm right? saying this, Woody. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. Because I can. Yeah, if please. If you buy a $100 software, do not complain about what it can not do for you. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Hey, I want a car. I'm only going to give you $100 for it, but, man, why doesn't it get me to work? I don't even want to hear it. I'm just going to say that. No, I that's good. I'm saying it. I don't mind. So... Want to hear. So I, I got a pro is very popular, and, and you know you guys know most of your, you, I mean not you guys, but there's a lot of people that have clients on. There's nothing wrong with it. Very robust, but maybe something on that list was worth hundred and fifty dollars because that's basically the difference. Probably, yeah. right? Something on that list. Woody, I think. <clears throat> Go ahead. I think it's worth the list, and I just want to say uh, hello to Melanie and Kelly who just joined the chat. We have quite a full chat, and I have. Awesome. I want to say we took care of the two party checks, the joint checks. Um, I actually um, remembered 
a few years ago, the Sleater blog had an article about that, so I put a link uh, in the chat room to that. So if you ever um, need a little bit of advice, uh, the Sleater blog, Doug actually wrote a nice piece about um, two-party or joint checks for contractors on the Sleater blog. Yes. And I have the other question. Great trick. I have the other question from Louise, if you guys are ready for it. Yep. I'm going to read it, which means I'm not going to be able to answer it because it's not going to stick in my brain. So I'm just going to say that much. Um, the question is, I need to be able to delete items that show up in the deposit. When converting from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online, some items were deleted, throwing our undeposited funds out of balance. I traced them back to 2009 and 2012. When I tracked them through the audit report, they turned out to be items, and then in quote it says, deleted by import admin. So this is kind of... Ew, I, that's, not a, that's not a happy story. Yeah, um, it seems like this may be uh, an error in the import or the conversion. In the conversion, right. Um, they are all refunds on a MasterCard, so when I try to fix them, it puts the undeposited funds into balance, but then puts these amounts into the deposit. I cannot delete the deposit, so if I accept them, it will then again throw undeposited funds out of balance. Mm -hmm. I've tried every different combination of this, and every type of entry will throw the undeposited funds out of balance. Any ideas? with three question marks. So this deleted, by, I'm just going to say this deleted by import Adam, or admin, Adam, um, actually sort of alarms, it it alarms me a little bit because you shouldn't have anything deleted when you convert. So um, if you don't have any new transactions and if it's just a brand new conversion, I would actually kind of like burn it down and start over. Yes. So that's, I was going to suggest. That's me. Woody? It's a corrupted conversion, so just redo it. Okay. That's what kind of what I thought. So, Louise, um, the short answer is just burn it. Burn it all. Burn it right down to the ground. And what and, we mean is just, just, just go... Just cancel your account and, re and convert it. But I would do a, little, I'd do a little more. On the desktop side, you know, open the file, verify the data, you know, rebuild it a couple, three times, even make like a portable file, restore it. Just... Try to get it as the desktop file, which probably has nothing wrong with it, right? I'm not saying it's the desktop's fault either. It's it's the conversion between the two, and I know that. So, but still, you might as well have the cleanest QuickBooks desktop files yeah. you can. Yep. Then convert that one into the same realm, which will just wipe out the data you have there and see if you if have the you're same issue. Sixty days. It probably is. Yeah, Sounds hopefully. like it's recent. <clears throat> right. If it's not, then you have to cancel the subscription and just yep. start again. Don. I have a guess. It's just a guess. Okay. Um, need more information as always. But, Louise, potentially, are those items, I don't know, they say deleted upon import, but were they inactive when you imported them? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anything brings them in as active. Matter. Anything that is inactive in desktop becomes inactive when you convert it to QBO. This Actually, is I there's thought it was inactive. It's inactive in QBO. They're deleted in QBO. Very different. No, right. they come in. As list items, as active list items, they, come in as they active, are inactive. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying that, that... Right, go ahead. You know what I'm saying. Um, I think really the answer to the question is to get Unidata and have your QuickBooks desktop hosted. Okay. That's the answer, because you know what? I sure. get it, the whole conversion nope. thing, and it's cool. I've had conversions. I've moved people to QuickBooks Online. I had no problem whatsoever. Everything was cool. You know, balance sheet ties out, everything's cool. And then there's times it just doesn't come in right. And depending on the volume of information, um, I'm just going to say, what's the difference of paying the QBO subscription yeah. versus the hosting subscription if, yeah, if you're having to repair things and you cannot get things to balance? And what, you spend uh, how much money on a consultant or an accountant to fix everything for you? And what I, I'm just saying... Know your audience on, in sure. that situation, and you know what? It might most go over no problem, but when you come into those situations, are you really doing what's best for the client? That's the number one thing. The clients come first. Our opinions come last. The facts are the facts. That's all I'm going to say. Good suggestion. 
doesn't happen that often. Fine. It's not. This is not a regular problem. No, no. Right. So maybe that is a good solution. Those issues yeah. You've got to be solid enough in your understanding of what's best for the client and having that true belief in what's best for the client. So that's all I'm saying, Woody. That's good. I'd still try the conversion one more time. Why Do not? one more time. But I if it check. doesn't, how much money are they going to spend to get it right? That's all I'm saying. Right. No, it's, uh, I hear you. It's good. So you have two, two possible so solutions. I I did, wait, 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 wait. And Louise is saying she didn't delete. And we understand that you didn't delete it. But what we're saying is that it was the the conversion is was corrupted and so right. you shouldn't get anything that was deleted by import admin you you right. shouldn't have anything that gets deleted when you make that conversion so what we're saying is if you're within that 60 day window where you just set, set up the quickbooks online account then just do what Woody said clean up the data do like a you know portable and I can send you Louise if you want to email me uh, let me know I have a deck um, a, like a, a thing that you can look at as, as to what you need to do to a QuickBooks data desktop file before you convert it. Um, so I'll send you that and then um, just reconvert it. Like basically make a portable copy, re, it, like uh, restore the portable copy. That should clean up any data corruption that you have in the desktop file. Make sure you're within your uh, size limits uh, and it's uh, not a file size. It's a number of targets in the file, so you need to do an F2, and I believe it's 350,000, isn't it, Woody? Transaction targets, yeah, which yeah. is about three or four under file size. You'll see it there. Yeah, so if do an F2, um, and then um, make sure that um, when you, and then just reconvert it. So if you're in within the 60 days, you're just going to convert it and basically wipe out the data that's there. Um, if you're past that, been working in that data. Yeah. A whole, yeah. Right, right. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff going on, yeah. What happens is that she's converted, and it was, say, 50, I don't care if it's 59 or 30 days ago. Right, she, they may have new data. But right. if she, yeah, so she's lived, but if she's been living in QBO, and now we're saying reconvert, that's just a storm of stuff that it's just, it could be, it could be a problem, so... Well, then just maybe you could convert to a new 30-day free trial and just see if it's any better. And then just, you know, that's your new realm for them and they lose the yep. data, you know, that they entered in the last yep. couple weeks. I mean, either way, going to Unidata, they're going to lose data too because they, they've they been entering in a QBO that yep. they're going to kill correct. anyway. So. That's correct. Um, Charlie just asked a really quick question, and he was asking about Jesse from T-Sheets. And Jesse from T-Sheets, uh, Jesse Bryant actually left T-Sheets. She went to go start her own... Uh, consulting business, they're doing a lot of um, like copywriting and stuff like that, uh, kind of marketing, and uh, so she could spend some more time with her family. So yep, uh, we're set awesome. to see her go, but I, I think she's going to be absolutely so badass at what she does. She's just an amazing person. So yes, Charlie, she did. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think she should be an actress. I think she should go to Hollywood. Actually, I think that's what happened. I think she and the family got in, you know, an RV and they moved to Hollywood, and she's trying to be an actress because she she could be an actress. Yeah. So that's my story of what happened to Jesse. You know, opinions may vary. Right. <laughs> okay. Opinions may vary. Right. <laughs> I just miss her. I yeah, know. she was cool. That's all I'm gonna say. Right. You guys got to watch Gally. that. Gally is fitting right in. You cannot pronounce her last name, and you know mm -hmm. what? If you can, it doesn't make you cool. I'm gonna throw that out there. We gotta post that uh, video they did with the hashtags. It's really fun. Oh, I, I, that is fine. awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. So, so let me show have, this one. Have, Oaks, go ahead, Stacy. I just want to. I'll go get. I'll go out. get Adam. I got. I got a Wonder Woman cuff for my my 40th birthday is coming up in a couple weeks. Just so everybody knows. And uh, speaking of the T-shirts, people, we love them. Yeah, I'm 40. Yeah, you're moving into the dark side. I know, right? I call All it halfway. Of... I'm over. I'm, I'm over just... 40, so I'm calling it halfway. So I'm just going to say, like, all sorts of stuff starts happening when you approach 40 that nobody ever <laughs> tells you about. And I was, I'm always That's like, what? What? what is happening here? Um, so anyway, so she, uh, Jen Hetherington, uh, bought me an early birthday present, and uh, I have a major girl crush on Wonder Woman. Uh, I have a few 
Wonder Woman bathing suits, and I have a bunch of Wonder Woman uh, cups and mugs and things like that. And uh, she bought me a Wonder Woman, gorgeous Wonder Woman cup for my birthday, and I just wanted to give a shout out to Jen for that. So, Dawn, are you ready for a question? I'm always ready. Okay. All right. Always ready. Okay. So here we go. Um, how about this one? This is an easy one. And it, I think it works. Um, here's an interesting one. How do I link a sales receipt? <laughs> I think now my coming. I think, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Love yeah. it. Hi. Oh, Hi, yeah. sweetie pie. Yeah, do you see I know, Don the show, I understand being concerned about the show. I get it. Stacey? So did you guys do the vendor credit already? No, we saw the baby. Or I did. I can't stand it. We'll the credit. I'll let you answer it. So, um, Woody, I added yes. credit to the bill, and now I need to cancel that credit. This is if it looks online. Yes. I'm going to share out and do that. Abby and I are going to do that. Um, hopefully, my internet connection stays um, because, uh, you know, I've had issues with it sometime during the show, and your voice started to go out. But hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. So, yeah. I'm in this. I'm in this file, um, and I'm going to go to Recent Transactions, because that's where I did it. And the question is basically, they have a vendor credit against the bill, and where would they go? But they already applied it in, in pay bills. So on the bill payment, you'll see both the bill and the vendor credit. And the vendor credit term is in blue. That's right. Okay. Vendor credit's in blue, and when you click on it, it brings you to the vendor credit form. At the bottom of that form, you just click the More tab. And then there's delete. And then that's going to remove the vendor credit from the bill. So then you basically have an open bill again, and you'll find it again in pay bills. And that's, that's a good way to find it. Because um, you'll see these little blue links throughout QBO when you're on transactions. Um, and uh, that's all Abby and I were wanting to show you how to. That was a forum question. Um, how uh, do you actually, you know, delete a vendor credit? That more tab's pretty important. Agreed. The more tab's really important um, because that's where it hides like void, delete, copy, the the uh, history report, the journal report are all under that more tab. Woody. Yes. I know Abby can't hear me because you have the. I have the earbuds. Down, but if yeah. you wouldn't mind live time, just asking her how she feels about the desktop, I would like to see her reaction to that. If you don't mind, just for a second. Hey. Miss Don wants to know. Wait, wait! Favorite. You gotta share your screen. Don't ask her until you share the screen. I can't. I mean, you're or you like see? you're blocked right now for some reason. Really? You can't see. What about now? No. Really? No. Weird. Because I just unshared. Yeah, I'm not sharing anymore. Okay, that's all right. Stace, go ahead. Once we can see the baby, then I wanna. I want you to ask that question. I'm very curious. Can you guys see her? It'll make me decide whether I want to hold her or not. To be totally Can you guys honest. see her? I can't see her. Stacy, are you there? Maybe it's my uh, the internet. Oh, Stacy's right. frozen. Yeah, maybe it's frozen. I'm the only one on, which makes me be able to, you know, yeah, charge of the show. Can you not hear me? I can't. I can hear you. I just can't see you. Your oh, face weird. is making a sound like it's the sound is coming out of your face. Yeah, I think it's. I think that is the problem. I think. See, yeah. I can see you when I click on you, but when I go to me, I can see it. I can see Abby, but I don't click know. Click on you. Hang it. on. Yeah, just click on me. Yeah, I'm not in charge. Stacy is, and she's frozen. Ah, uh, okay, so that's you know it. what? I'm gonna monopolize the whole thing. Yes, please. Which is totally fine. Um. Yeah, I really wanted to get that straight answer. The. Uh, well, she know, likes QBO. She akin oh, desktop. There you are. Yeah, she she likes QBO. She akins the desktop as being stuck under the couch. Uh, All right, so does. just ask her Go real quick. Get her to engage. Abby, Abby, do you what is your take on QuickBooks Desktop versus QuickBooks Online? She and I are telepathically communicating right now. Yeah, what is she saying, Don? I don't. I can't really read it. She, she said, "Oh, desktop she's like, Daddy, I love you, but I have to go to the other side." <laughs> She's like, I love you, Daddy. 
Don't yeah. love me any less, but I love the desktop. Abby, you love the desktop, sister. Watch yeah. her smile. Look at her. <laughs> oh, yeah, she loves the desktop. Okay, as long as we've cleared that up. You're doing all right. You're doing good. I, yeah, I, I, I totally like, get it, Abby. I understand yeah. the pain that you're going through. I know. Think about that, you know, huh? Log out, man. I get it. Uh, so this has been a great show, Woody. It's cool. I think we That's answered fun. a lot of really good questions. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we've done, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So the show ended. Well, Stacy thinks it ended. It didn't end for us. Well, I'll, I'll end it, no problem. But I wanted to thank, you know, our sponsors and also yeah. people who, who hopefully they were able to hang out to the end. But I want to thank Avalara. Again, sales tax. Go to avalara.com. T-Sheets, T-Sheets.com. And, of course, Skyline, formerly Unidata, unidataIT.com for QuickBooks, Microsoft Office hosting. <laughs> <laughs> what, she's trying to log you out of QBO. I'm just telling you right trying now. To. Yep, she's trying to kick the uh, the laptop around. But good. I'm glad I got to bring Abby on for fun. I'm gonna go back out and help in the gardens. Get the beds going, Don. Got a little work while it's still light outside. We're gonna go I do that. <laughs> He's cool. And uh, we appreciate you guys listening. Thanks again, to sponsors. And we will see you on uh, nine uh, nine. 9-9-2014, next Wednesday. Thanks for listening, Don. Have a great one. Love you, Woody. All right. Take care, you Always, guys. Always, buddy. All right. Peace.
crypto away, thumb drives, no attachments Get the files anywhere when you're permitted access What's the matter? Brush it with the hassle Jump up in the cloud and join us in the castle We're high up in the clouds and we're never coming down So get up, get up Get the files and-